The Small Business Show, episode 188 for Wednesday, September 12th, 2018. Greetings, folks, and welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show by, for, and about BFA Small Business. Sponsors for this episode include Timing. We're at timingapp.com slash business. You can download an app that will revolutionize the way you track your time, and that is important. Also, Gusto at gusto.com slash SBS for a three free month trial of their refreshingly easy payroll benefits and HR for your small business We'll talk about those in a moment here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And on the West Coast, I am Shannon G. I'm excited to be here today, man. Yeah, How man. Doing? Always. I'm good. I'm good. good. I'm good. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. It's always crazy, but you know. Yes. Mostly it good. Is. Yeah. <laughs> mostly good. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and I want to, you know, thank those sponsors too. You know, we we do this show to give back to the small business community, but there are certainly expenses involved in doing it. So they help us keep the lights on. And we appreciate our listeners uh listening to those. Those spots, the yeah. good stuff. I, and I, yeah. I will, I know we've said it before, but you know, I'll say it again. Our, our job here, when we do take on a sponsorship and, and deliver it to you, our job is to encourage you or get you <laughs> to visit their website at, or, or look. And, and then from there, whether or not you choose to buy or sign up or anything, that's between you and them, right? Our job is, yep. is to get you there. Uh, hopefully explain a little bit about it, but to be fair, not too much so that you are encouraged to visit to learn more. That's that's how we see our job. That's, you know, and we're uh, yep. you know, very upfront about this, obviously, with you because we're telling you. But it's the same thing with our sponsors. And that's what they that's what they expect of us. So so I tell you that so that, you know, but also if you want to help the show, it going and checking out our sponsors is a huge help to the show. It really, truly does make a difference. So, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Cool. Yeah. Right on, right on. So what are we talking about today? We I got, that, uh, yeah, uh, we got, uh, we got an email from listener Todd here and, uh, and I thought this might be a good thing to, to sort of say, let the, lay the foundation of a discussion for our episode. Uh, Todd writes, he says, uh, I apologize for the forthcoming novella. I've chosen you guys to vent some frustration on, and we, by proxy, will share it with all of you, our lovely listeners. He says, uh, great episode about being persistent. I always get pumped up after, after an episode like this, only to come crashing back down when I remember that my problem is not persistence or lack of ideas, but time itself. Now, I know everyone says they don't have enough time to start or grow their side business, but I'm that I'm not that excuse making lazy person with a 40 hour work week. I truly have trouble finding time because I am an over uh, the road trucker. That means I'm usually working 70 hours per week, which can include up to 14 hour days. And then, of course, 10 hours of mandatory rest. The 10 hours allow me just enough time to exercise, shower, eat and get some sleep before I'm back up and rolling again. So as you can see, cutting myself short on sleep to run my side business is not an option. I'm pretty sure no one wants a tired trucker behind the wheel of an 80,000 pound weapon. <laughs> we Correct. agree here. Yeah. Yes. Check. Right. Yes. Uh, he says, I do sometimes get little breaks throughout my day while I'm getting loaded or unloaded, but I find it very hard to get motivated when I know I only have one or two hours. It usually takes my brain a little while to kick into creative mode. I also occasionally hit my 70 hour DOT maximum, and I sometimes have to take a 34 hour or get to take a 34 hour break. This is usually two rest periods with some time in between. I spend this uh, awake time working on my website and producing my trucker dump podcast uh, of which I'm only able to kick out one episode per month. He says, I also get about three days off per month to be at home, but understandably uh, the wife and ex co-driver wants my attention instead of futzing around with a side business that isn't making much money right now. I know if I had more time to publish, publish more episodes, I could increase my podcast audience and therefore my sponsorship revenue. And uh, he says he also has eBooks uh, and they typically bring in a little bit, but not very much because they're niche books for the, the trucking industry. He says, additionally, I have an idea for my third eBook and also want to start another podcast that I see good sponsorship money available. Uh, but again, there simply isn't enough time to pursue these ideas. 
I know it sounds pretty hopeless, but I'm going to keep plugging away. Uh, I would be interested to see if you guys had any ideas to help the situation. Obviously, other than quitting my trucking job, uh, he says my wife would get truly evil if I did that. All right. So great, right? This is you. I am uh, your situation is, of course, unique because everybody's is. But I, I am certain you're not alone here, Todd. And and so everyone listening that that uh, that hears this story and it resonates with you. This this episode's for you. So there you go. Uh, yeah, I agree. And I have some ideas. <laughs> all right, man. Well, let's go. No I'm kidding. Really? <laughs> yeah, imagine that. Imagine that. Well, I have some questions, too, and, and we have to get some follow up. But the the. A couple of points that I I wanted to to make is, uh, is it about you know the revenue that's coming in, or is it oh I want to produce more, I want to do more, uh, you know if it's about the revenue, it, it, I would ask yourself, Todd, you know is a podcast the the best uh, vehicle to to generate that revenue, uh, and you'll have to answer that. I, I don't know, but the the other thing that came to to my mind as I was listening to or reading your uh, your email, and thank you for that. Can can you record while you're driving? And I know that sounds maybe kind of weird. I don't think you're doing that now, and I know it would be loud or whatever. But since your your trucker dump podcast is obviously for other truckers, uh, maybe a little background noise from the road, or or maybe there's some things you could do to the inside of your truck to kind of insulate it, you know, with some more foam or something like that. Um, it seems like that that would be something that would immediately increase your uh, available time to record if you're able to do that and keep your, you know, your focus on the road, but you're, you know, you're, you're talking, right? Well, and that might, I, I mean, it, th- there could be two different podcasts here, right? There could be yeah. the, the longer form uh, Trucker Dump podcast, but then there could be Trucker Dump Daily Right. Yeah. Where, right. you know, you're putting out whatever, three, four, five episodes a week and you're doing maybe 10 minutes from behind the wheel. That's much if if an audience is going to be um, turned off by the background noise, a shorter segment of background noise isn't isn't such a bad thing. Right. I like. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. And I remember, you know, when when we. Uh, well, when podcasting began, the there were very few podcasts out there, and I like to listen to Adam Curry's uh, Daily Source Code, right? And and he would sure. do this show every day, and it, I loved it. It was a great show. It was it was sort of all over the map, but he has similar interests to me. One of which is aviation. So, uh, and he is both a uh, fixed wing and helicopter pilot. And there was one. Uh, daily source code episode that I, I mean, now we probably, you know, 12, 13 years later that I distinctly remember he recorded himself. And I don't even know if this was legal uh, per the FAA or wherever he was. In fact, I don't think he was in the U S I think he was somewhere else, but he did a a flight uh, in, in his small plane from, I don't know, one European country to another. It was, you know, it was like an hour long flight or something short, but uh, I, I mean, the whole thing was fascinating. And, he included not just his whatever the content of the show was, which was, you know, his meandering thoughts for the day. But you also heard his communication with the tower and all of that stuff. And and throughout the whole thing, there was some moderate hum of the propeller going yeah, because. That's yeah. Good. And not it was cool. Deal, right? Yeah. No, sure. I really liked it. In fact, I as I'm as I'm telling this story, I'm thinking, man, I. I wish I could listen to that again. You know, <laughs> yeah, that was a good yeah, episode. And, yeah. Right. And and I think that, um, you know, coming up with a way to do that while you're, you know, behind the wheel is, is a, is, would be a good way to see, uh, you know, I- increasing that, that available time, uh, for you to record. And, yeah. And well, I, yeah. yeah you're, gotta be a way to do it. You're creating more time for you to yeah. perform your, to do your business. Uh, you know. Yeah. And I think it's really authentic and transparent and I think it would be cool. And maybe instead of a one hour or, and, and I don't know how long trucker dump podcast is. I think you said a couple, an hour or two, uh, but maybe changing to that shorter format, but more frequently would really help. And, and w- as a side, not to make this all about podcasts, but one of the things that Dave and I have done is we really, and maybe you can tell, but we don't put much time into post-production. You know, we record the show, make as few edits as possible, most of the time, none, and we push it out. 
And so what we found is our audience is pretty forgiving when we have some little glitches or mic, this kind of thing. And, and that, so, you know, maybe a, a less post-production and uh, recording more and trying to do it behind the wheel. Uh, yeah, I will say when we started our first podcast, which was Mac Geek Gab, I knew that I would not have time to spend three hours, you yeah. know, obsessively editing like I would want to. Right. Of you know, course. I, I, and yeah. I, the problem is I have, I mean, it was both a blessing and a curse, right? I, because I'm a musician, I I've learned how to use audio software. I knew how long it would take. Like I was not uh, misled by, Oh yeah, well you record it. Then you just go through it and you make some tweaks and no, no, I knew that this would, would take a while. And I, that's why I built a workflow that, you know, we've continued to refine and refine over the years. But the workflow was the goal being 15 minutes after the the podcast has stopped recording, it is published. And yeah, we can't killer. always do that. But that yeah. is the goal. And it, you know, or it is publishable. Sometimes we'll like Shannon and I will record this, you know, show a day early or a week early sometimes even. But uh, right. But, you know, that's the goal, because I know that I've got I, like I'm crazy busy. I, I could fill up more time than I have. But, yeah. you know, and, and 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 that's the thing is, you know, learning to prioritize. And I, and I know it's easy for us to say we don't have to drive a truck 70 hours a week. But um, but either, you know, maximizing the time you have or learning to prioritize or like Shannon said, maybe finding a different business that is. Uh, more uh, adaptable to the time you do have. Yeah. And, and look, you know, one of my, my uh, points on my notes here today is, uh, is, are you willing to pay the price? Are you really willing, you know, something has to give for you to get a business on the side going. And Todd certainly seems to be paying the price and, you know, he's got, he's got it narrowed down to the small window every day and he's trying to, you know, live a life, but he's also trying to carve out a, a side business, which is great. And I commend him. Um, I, I find often that when people tell me they don't have time, uh, you can kind of drill down pretty quick and, and find some time that they do have, uh, you know, I always ask, Oh, do you, do you watch any TV? You know? And, and I always right there, I'm just like, well, don't do that. <laughs> you right. know? And, and, and in the evening, you know, hang out with your, your family or whatever, but then, you know, go back to work. And, uh, you know, even if you're sitting on the couch with the laptop and trying to build a website, write a business plan, answer emails, whatever it is you're going to do, um, you know, there's, there's usually more time, but there is a price you have to pay. Um, are you willing to change your life to make more time? for your small business. Uh, you have to. Um, and uh, it sounds like Todd is willing to do it. And, you know, we always talk on the show here, uh, flexibility versus freedom. And the, the great thing I love about uh, one of the many things about living a charmed life of a small business owner, like we talk about here all the time, is that flexibility. You know, if you want to work late in the evening, versus, uh, you know, I, I can't get into the office this morning or dif different things. It's not, you, you get to make those decisions. You, you're going to be working all the time. It's just the way it's going to be. But if you want to be successful, I think, but you get the choice of uh, choosing the time. Yeah, you do. And I think, yeah. I think yeah. That's a, that's, that's I, I also thing. think learning um, to, to spotlight your time and your focus is it is a skill. It is not something that everyone just naturally does, but it is learnable. And, and so, you know, Todd said, and, and, and thank you for letting us sort of, you know, use you as our case study here, Todd. And, and I apologize if it sounds like we're picking on you, but I mean, we're sort of intentionally picking on you to, to really dig into this. Yeah, uh, he, can, he can take, he can, he, take can, it. he can totally take it. I know. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, but he, you know, he said that he's only got an hour or two. It's like, Whoa, that's actually a lot of time. Right. Yeah, and, yeah. and learning to spotlight your time. And when I say spotlight, I, I use that as sort of the opposite of multitasking. Um, when, when I think of multitasking, first of all, I think of, you know, big giant failure because it's yeah. almost impossible to really do two things at once. Although we just suggested that he drive a truck and talk. That's actually one of those things where you can sort of multitask. Can, yeah. Yeah. To a degree. Yeah. But in terms of really focusing on creating things, uh, you need to be focused on one thing at a time, but the trick is to learn how to change that focus very quickly. And, and again, it's just a skill like anything else. 
you, you know, the more you exercise it, the better you will get at this. And, and it's, you know, I, I have 10 minutes. Okay, cool. I am going to dive in and focus on this one thing that I need to do. And in addition to learning to sort of ignore distractions for these short little periods of time, you also learn how to think about the things you need to get done in, in terms of this is going to take 10 minutes. This is going to 15 minutes, like breaking things down into those little bits. Like I had to, we, we have another business and we're, we're doing some things with it. We needed an audio file. And I knew that my time was going to be chopped up today. So the first thing I did was I, I said, okay, I'm going to go look at a website uh, that has stock audio, right. And, and come up with five samples and present those to the team here. And I did that. And then I had some other stuff I had to do. And I came back and they had sort of gone through and I listened again. I'm like, yep. Okay. We all like number three, whatever it was. Great. I said, cool. Uh, I'll go download them and I'll edit it. There was some extra low end rumble on, on one of these files that we wanted to get rid of. And I know how to do that. You know, it's no problem, but I knew I didn't have time to log in, buy the thing, download it and then go edit it. So I logged in and downloaded it. So at least when I had time again later, I wasn't trying to do the whole thing. Even though downloading it is only a five minute thing. And for me, because I already know what to do, editing the file was really only a five or 10 minute thing. I, I was able to, by chopping those up, I got them all done today, as opposed to kicking that can down the road to tomorrow morning when I might have, you know, a 30 minute block of time that I could squeeze this into. And, and it really is that spotlighting. Like when I was editing that audio file, there was nothing else on my mind. Uh, I, you know, and you have to learn to be ruthless with your, your time and your focus, but yeah, it's but, very difficult, but, 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 it, but the more you do you it, the better you'll get. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you can come up with different ways to do it. I, I have this, you know, the same situation almost every single day. And as I'm moving into one task, you know, something else pops into my head or I, I get a message, sure. uh, you know, something happens and. It, I keep a pad next to me so I can try to offload those those little distractions and say, oh, okay, great. Yeah, I have to, I have to circle back to this or circle back to that. Um, and, you know, like we had Bob Levitas on a show uh, a while back and he talked about the Pomodoro technique where you use that little tomato timer, uh, you know, set it for 20 minutes and you focus on one task for 20 minutes. I, I think it really works. Um 20 minutes is a long time, a really uh, long time. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, I tend to bounce around a lot and I think I've just had enough practice at it uh, over the years that, that I either that or I'm fooling myself thinking I can be effective. But I also think working, if you have a bunch of employees and departments and you're kind of like, you have to manage by distractions all day long. And, uh, you you come to, you learn how to do it and like you can delegate you can do those things I think it's great but uh, uh, it is an important part I love that term spotlighting your time um, and really figuring out what is important at that time because you know there's a saying you know if if everything's important then nothing is right so y- you need to know okay now for the next whatever ten minutes twenty minutes, you know this is the thing I am going to do uh, I think that I think that works out well um, I had a business also, partner. Uh, a- a while back that uh the my the, actually the guy that i co-founded backbeat media with greg snyder who he said something to me one day and it really it's like just one of those things that sticks and he said oh yeah he's like i have to be ruthless with my time it's like right that you know yeah, yeah that's that's the right thing that's the right yes. way to think about it because you that's the one thing you don't have and can't create more of Right. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So you got it. Speaking about being ruthless with your time, I want to talk about our first sponsor, which is timing. So uh, timing is the automatic time tracking app for the Mac. Right. So if for anybody billing their hours, you need to be tracking your time. This much is obvious. Right. Enter timing instead of making you start and stop different timers to figure out what you've been doing timing automatically tracks how much time you spend in each app that you have but not just in the apps in each document inside the app and in each website inside your web browser and it shows you exactly when you were working on what when you slacked off and how productive you've been so you know how to improve your productivity but your work doesn't only happen on the mac right That's why Timing's timeline 
automatically make suggestions for filling in the gaps, right? So when you step away from your Mac, it doesn't know what you're doing. When you come back, it can, it, you can have it set to ask you, what did you do while you were away? Were you at lunch? Were you at a meeting? Were you on a phone call? Right? These things help you really get a sense of how you're using your time. And I've used this app on and off uh, over the years. And it really, it's, it's like, it, it, it's one of those things where for me, you know, I'll use it for a month or so and it radically, it, you know, it's just informative. You have data. So then you can learn, oh yeah, I got to be, be, be better with my spotlighting, right? That which is monitored is managed and yeah, timing great. allows you to do that monitoring and that management and it does it in an automated way. So you got to check it out. Download the 14 day trial for free today at timingapp.com slash small business and then save 10% when you purchase. So stop worrying about time and focus on doing your best work. Instead, again, timingapp.com slash small business. Our second sponsor for today is Gusto, right? Payroll and benefits are hard, especially for small businesses. You don't have the time to be an expert in things like taxes and regulations, especially when it's on a state by state basis, right? Old payroll, old school payroll providers just aren't built for the way you and you and I work today, right? Gusto is making payroll benefits and HR super easy for small businesses. They've built this in today's world, which means modern technology does all the heavy lifting. So it's super easy to get things right. 72% of Gusto customers say they spend less than five minutes to run payroll. That's a pretty good thing. And if you don't believe it, Google people love Gusto. How often do people actually say they love their payroll provider? Right. Think about that for a second. Yeah, no one loves deal. their payroll <laughs> provider, but people right. just, they, they deal with it. Not Gusto. So you got to check it out. Most small businesses don't have an HR expert, but you don't need one to use Gusto. They've got their great software, their great service that allows you to focus on your business, not payroll and paperwork. So like we were saying earlier in the episode to help support the show, Gusto is offering our listeners an exclusive limited time deal. Sign up at gusto.com slash SBS today, and you'll get three months free once you run your first payroll. Again, that's gusto.com slash SBS. Our thanks to Gusto for sponsoring this episode. All right, man. Fantastic. Yeah, I wanted to add one thing on to your spotlight uh, yeah. uh, concept here is, is also one thing that helps me a lot with time is is that spotlighting, but also creating a schedule. Uh, you know, if you have certain repetitive things that need to happen, you know, task A happens, you know, Monday, Wednesdays and Friday, I'm going to do it between eight and 9 a.m. or eight and 830, whatever works. Uh, it, it has really helped me a lot to to carve out that time and to stick to it. And then I know, okay, I'm not going to schedule anything during that time period because this works well for me. Uh, one, of, one of my businesses right now, I'm, I'm doing a lot of photography and product photos and all that kind of stuff. And I've found that it's, it's better at night and I get rid of the natural light. I've got, you know, all the studio lights going and I just know, okay, you know, between seven and eight, I'm going to go ahead and do uh, product shots. And so that, I think the scheduling helps a lot. Um, you know, keeping, keeping things on track. I, I never understood. Well, I mean, I do now, but initially I really didn't grok the concept of scheduled tasks, right? I would, I would, I would have my to-do list and then I would have on my calendar, I would schedule time to like do this podcast, which has to happen at, you know, the same time because, Hey, you and I are here and it yeah. takes time. Right. But I, I, up until maybe it was, I don't know, two years ago or something, I had never scheduled a task and I, something came up where I, like you, you know, I was, oh yeah, I got to do this every Wednesday morning. And I would realize that I would book appointments for myself on Wednesday mornings or whatever. And then it would be almost noontime. I'd be like, oh yeah, there's that thing I need to do. And I still haven't right. done it yet today. And so I would, I needed to get it done. So I would, you know, push something off in the afternoon. And I thought, well, wait a minute, my calendar software uh, supports scheduled to do's. Uh, why don't I just do that? And it life changing, right? The, yeah, the concept, like you said, of carving out time for yourself. That's really the trick. It's not like this. I'm carving out time to do a podcast with you, right? Or carving out sure. time to make a phone call with someone else. 
scheduled to do's. I mean, it doesn't have to be a to do. You can just be an event on your calendar, but don't be afraid to schedule time with yourself. Yeah. That's a good, I like that, man. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And, and you know, one of the other things that I find is, uh, if you're interacting with people and I, I say all of us do it, even if it's not work related, but if you've got, you know, your spouse, other family members, partners, employees, you need to communicate what your time needs are to those people. So coming back to the scheduling, if if Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 8 to 8.30, you're doing task X, well, people need to, you know, respect that. They need to know about it. Or like in my case, hey, I want to do product uh, photography between 7 and 8 p.m. So I let my wife know, say, hey, Renee, uh, you know, this week, you know, Monday and Wednesday, I'm going to do, you know, from this time to that time that you kind of build this support system into what you're doing, whether you're telling your spouse or whether it's your employees going, hey, guys, from 8 to 8.30, I'm taking calls from the East Coast or whatever. Uh, you, they, they will know then not to come in and not to introduce those distractions, not to ask questions until you're done and, and you know, schedule out some of that time uh, and communicate it to everyone else who can be very helpful. Yeah, that's a good idea. Plus, it, it just yeah. sets expectations. Like you said, yeah. you know, you're, that whole concept of you get home from your day job, whatever that is, and yep. you have dinner, maybe some family time or whatever, and then – you know, you know that, well, there's this other time between then and when I go to sleep that maybe I just watch TV or mess around or whatever. And that's sure. that's the time that you can recapture and, and and repurpose for your small, you know, your side business or whatever. Yeah. Making sure your family knows that you're wanting to spend that time on your small business will help. Right. Because now yeah. you're, they're not going to pull you away. So. Right. And it, and it changes based on the kind of stages of your life. Like when my kids were little, uh, you know, I would be, I didn't want to do anything else when I got home, but hang with them, do all the stuff you got to do, help with homework and all the things. And then spend a little time with my wife and hang out. So I used to work, you know, uh, 10, 11 o'clock till midnight or 1am. Those were my extra time that I worked and started a company with you, Dave, um, right. and, and did all that stuff. And, uh, you know, once we got that going and now my kids are older. And so we come home, you hang out, how was your day, have dinner, talk, chat, whatever. They're off to do homework and get things done. So there's an hour or two free for me before I want to come back down to the house and, you know, hang out with my wife and, you know, do whatever. Uh, and so it, you just have to look at what, what stage of your life you're in and look for those little pockets of time that, that you can, uh, kind of re reallocate to do different things. Yeah. And uh, you know, again, yeah. as you start to do this, just like everything, you'll get better at identifying, Oh, wait a minute. There's like an, an hour there that I can use. I never yeah. really thought about that. You, you know, it's just, the, it's exercise, right? The more you do it, the better you get. It's practice yeah. rather. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then, you know, a couple of things I wanted to add, um, we've talked about it here a lot, uh, the, the systems versus goals approach. I think that also helps with your time management because, um, you know, the, the setting a huge goal and holding it out there and, and, you know, trying to get and, and hit that over, you know, over some time frame. I think it's easier to manage your time in small chunks if you've created a system that is going to achieve what you want, whether it's revenue based, whatever sales, whether what you name it, you creating your system to achieve what you want. Um, you can you can parse it up into smaller chunks that I believe uh, are a bit easier to manage with a hectic schedule, especially if you're trying to you know start something new on the side. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Definitely. Yeah. You got to chunk it up. Yeah. There's. Yeah. 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 And then, you know, uh, some obvious stuff, you want to use as many automation tools as you can. What software is going to, you know, save you time? Uh, what services can you use? If you're, you know, Todd is really into doing a, the podcast and wants some awesome production values, I I know there are services out there that you can kind of get to and, and use, uh, you know, maybe a virtual assistant, different things, but automate as much as you can. Um, and I, I think that, you know, we talk about optimism here on the show and how it's so important and it's, uh, you know, creating your own reality. But but I think you need to be optimistic and 
at least somewhat realistic with your time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's Not, true. Yeah, yeah, you need to lie to yourself a little bit, but yes, yeah, yes, yes. but but yeah, not yeah. entirely. That's right. Yeah, and and realize you know what is is really uh, possible you know with your time because beating yourself up and having your inner judge just rip you to shreds all the time is not productive to getting achieving anything great and starting a new business uh, or you know something that you're doing so you know, understand that, okay, I, I'm going to peel out 45 minutes to an hour a day. Well, what can you really get done in that time and get something going and, you know, just, just kind of be aware of that. Yeah. Um, and, and one, you know, last thing, it, you know, it isn't always about money, but a lot of times it is. And, and one of the things that helps focus me, because I can go down all these, you know, rabbit holes, uh, you know, as, as good as the next person, probably better. But, if if I'm thinking about money and revenue and cash, I always ask myself, what can I be doing right now that will increase my revenue? And that really helps focus me on the important things that I need to do. If it's if you're focusing on money and you know and, and increasing cash, what is it that I can do right now that will help increase that revenue? And it, it helps me all the time. I go, okay, I can go take more product shots or I can go work on the website or I can go do a blog post and create some new content and do some social media. So those kinds of things can get rid of some of those distractions and those ancillary items that maybe you don't need to worry about. Man, that's so. a great, that's one of those things. I always say one of the hardest things about being a small business owner, whether you have employees or whether you're just on your own, is knowing what to do next. Yeah. Right. I mean, when you're when you're working yeah. for someone else, it is at least, you know, at some level, your manager's job, your boss's job to tell you what to do. Now, you know, the, depending on what your job is, you might have a lot of discretion with how you get stuff done. But there's this overall sort of driving thing that that you are being tasked with. And uh, when you're a business owner, there's no one there to tell you what to do next. And, and sometimes you just know, oh, I got to do that next. But other times you don't know. And asking right. that question, what can I be doing right now that will increase my revenue? Man, that, like you said, that cuts out a lot of distractions and just gets you yeah, focused right on the goal. I really yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. works. So, no wonder you make you know, the so big bucks, man. That's no, it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, I, I, you just have to keep looking at things and, and parsing your day down in little chunks. Uh, you heard both Dave and I say, you know, uh, during the show today, 20 minutes is a long time. And, you know, th that's a that's a huge, valuable chunk of time right there, 20 minutes. Mm. And I guarantee you burn 20 minutes looking at so social media every day, you know, or people or whatever, stocks or news. Yeah. Or, I mean, new, I'm a news well, junkie. And if you and, don't know, uh, use that timing app, right? At yeah, timingapp.com yeah. slash small business. I mean, it, it's it's yeah. serendipitous that they wound up being a sponsor it is. scheduled for this episode. I mean, it really like that answering those questions about, oh, yeah, wow, I spent two hours on Facebook throughout the day today. Yeah. Ooh, oh yikes. my gosh. That's right. Like that. You don't <laughs> really want to know that information except, except that you do want to know that information. So, well, most people don't want to know and they just want to roll through their routine each day. Yeah. But, if, but, but we believe that you, that you're listening to the show that you want to do different. You already are doing, you know, something different in your life with your business or you're like Todd, where you're trying to grow something new and, you know, on the, the get a side business going to make your life better. You're not like those folks and you need to analyze your time because uh, that's your most valuable possession. That's it. That's as good as yeah. it gets. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Thanks for, uh, for listening to us, listening to us today. Hope we helped Todd out and maybe some of your other folks out there come share your story, feedback at businessshow.co or go to businessshow.co slash Facebook and come talk to us in the yeah. small business support group. Absolutely. Of course, we want to uh, thank our sponsors, Timing at timingapp.com slash small business and Gusto at gusto.com slash SBS. And I also want to thank our bandwidth partner, Cashfly, for providing all the bandwidth that gets this show from us to you. Yeah. Have a good one, folks. Keep living that charmed life. 